Hey, welcome back. Now that we've looked back and crowned the queens of rap in 2019, let's look ahead to the promising artists who could join the blacklist in 2020. So I want to reintroduce my guests, writer and music journalist Naima Cochran, DJ Benjamin, TV writer and podcast host, and music journalist Jaina Jefferson. So Meg, Cardi, Rhapsody, Lizzo, and Missy are kicking down the door for women, but we're about to discuss um, what each of you think who should be the female rappers to top the list in 2020? Hmm, that's a good one. I personally want to see the quirky girls win. Mm, I would cool, love, I love Rico Nasty. I think mm. her anger management EP was excellent. That came out this year with Kenny Beats. Um, she's, I think she's so cool. Um, really fan, a big fan of Tierra Wack. Mm -hmm. I really like LaKaylee 47. She performs with a mask on to keep that anonymity. Anonymity, what a word, right? <laughs> um, She's awesome. I like her a lot. Oh, I also really like Sampa the Great. Mm. And I also enjoy No Name. I like all the girls. All the girls who don't get the shine, I just want them to get it. Mm. Really. Put them all on the list for 2020. All of them. Every single girl. Yes. <laughs> what do you think, Naima? Um, I agree about LaKelly. Am I saying it right? LaKelly. LaKelly 47. Um, I expected to see more from her this year, actually. Um, and I was kind of surprised that it was a little quiet for her. Um, Actually, I am going to go back to our list. I think as big of a presence as Megan had this year, we haven't seen yet what she can actually do mm -hmm. with her talent. Um, I think her year is next year um, to actually really like, because she hasn't really had like a monster hit yet. That's just hers. Um, so I think that she still has a lot more growth ahead of her. And I think we still have yet to see what she's really going to do for us. And um, But I think that whoever it is next year, I think the important thing is that we can actually have a real conversation that there's room for a lot of women to play in the space where we wouldn't have had this conversation three years ago. All these women would have been bubbling under. And now we can actually talk about there being room for somebody to shine. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most important part. All right, DJ Ben Hameen, who's on your playlist for 2020? I agree uh, with what you said, because I didn't really like um, Meg's album like that. I thought mm -hmm. it was cool, but I'm like, she's got an album in her yeah. mm -hmm. that, you know, and mm -hmm. I think that's going to come in 2020. I also love, I found out about Sampha mm -hmm. this year. That's someone from London, right? She's, I think, originally from somewhere in Africa, but I think she resides in, in Australia. London. Oh, in Australia. Oh, yeah. that's the accent. Okay, she's so dope. Um, I love Sarah, the MC. She's been around for she a minute. She's good. And really, I don't think they're going to get the big shine because I don't think they're um, putting themselves out there like that. But uh, Toby and Igwe's wife, Fats, and his producer, Nell, are both really dope as rappers and artists in general. And I think Toby and his whole crew is just trying to get out there more. And so I, I just love them because I love the fact that he raps with his wife on stage and his producer mm -hmm. is a woman and she also raps with him on stage. Cool. So that's really... So, Ben, I want to ask you um, the tough questions because it's fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so when is it going to be time to stop separating the male and female rappers? Why can't it be one list, the greatest rappers? I mean, uh, you know, I just never, like, you know, sadly, it's just like, like what you were just saying earlier. You were talking about how, uh, you know, you need to go outside of the mainstream to find music. And it's so wild to me that we're still having that conversation, mm -hmm. you know, because that's something I've been telling people for like 20 years now, you know, and it's. Still wild, like when you were talking earlier, I don't pay attention to MTV. I don't listen to radio, any of that stuff like that. I listen to, you know, Spotify, Tidal. I find my music through that and through recommendations, everything. But I think that that's one of those things that people are just going to keep doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just one of those things. Mm -hmm. Like people are just going to always. I mean, I saw somebody the other day on Facebook. They were like, oh, man, I just found out about Sarah the MC. She's one of the dopest female MCs I've ever heard. And I was like, why didn't you just say dope MC? MC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's like comedy, how people will continue to separate men and women who do comedy. I think there are certain mm. spaces that people inherently think belong to men, mm. even though there have been women in there have been women doing big things in hip hop almost as long as we've had hip hop, and yet we still continue consider to consider it a, we still continue to consider it a male space. But I do agree, unfortunately, with Ben that people are gonna continue to separate because we're also just never gonna have there's never going to be as many female entertainers and artists, period, as there are men because they mm. cost more. They cost more to develop. They cost more to travel. They cost more to tour. They're just a more expensive, they're just a more expensive project. Well, why is that, though? Because they need more. They need glam. They need hair. They need, they need more development because people tend to allow themselves to be fans of multiple men but then only latch on to one or two women. And also some people just don't. 
the powers that be don't always get it. Mm-hmm. So there are never going to be as many women as there are men just on the charts in the world, period. So that already gives us opportunity for separation. Um, I would love to see it get back to the space where we do have as many viable women in the rap game as we did like in the 90s. Mm. Hopefully that's coming back around. But even then, they'll still separate it. Right. Yeah. You know. There's so, no reason why there should be 32 little whatevers and four <laughs> babies, <laughs> but we can only pay attention to three female rappers at a time, right. Right. if that. Mm. So you're in favor of consolidating? Um, I just think that we need to just level the playing field. I mean, if there's all these men who are rapping about the same thing. But how do we do that, though? How do we do that? Like I said, start reaching out, start paying attention, and start like holding, I guess, higher powers accountable to pay mm-hmm. attention to these girls who are not always, you know, boobs out. That's another big thing. But mm. it's also it's on the fan too. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, the thing about the internet that I hate is the is the rise of stan culture, and it's become this space where you can't have multiple people. It's like if I love this person, I hate everything about that person. Mm-hmm. You know, and and that's relatively new, mm-hmm. and I'm really not sure how it became this, but that's why, you know, Nikki was the only one out there for so long. Mm -hmm. And I think there's an entire generation of people who aren't used to you being able to, you know, say, I love this rapper and this rapper and this rapper and their girls and they hang out together. Like Mm -hmm. I, you know, we saw Kim and Brad and Missy, you know, chilling and Mm -hmm. doing tracks together and Left Eye and, you know, all that. There was a sisterhood. Mm -hmm. The sisterhood had the visible sisterhood kind of fell away. I think we're starting to see that coalesce again. I think that's important for fans to see mm-hmm. so that fans can also throw their support behind multiple Right, ones. and not be loyal to just one. Yeah, and and like, and like your loyalty to one somehow dictates that you need to be critical of the other. or just downright like insulting of the others. Mm. Yeah. Well, the cold hard truth is that the contributions of female MCs to the rap game can no longer be denied. And like Lizzo says, truth hurts. So I want to thank my guests, Naima, DJ Benjamin, and Jaina for joining us and sharing their unfiltered opinions. As always, thank you for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Marley Show. See you next time. You just watched a clip from the show that covers the culture like no other. For every episode, I assemble a panel of thinkers, activists, celebs, and outspoken experts to give us their unfiltered opinions on the topics that matter to Black America. This is elevated, intelligent, and uncensored discussion, representing every perspective, the conversations we have when we're the only ones in the room. No topic is off limits. We're not afraid to go there, and we do it all live five days a week. Join me here every week day at 4 p.m. Eastern. And don't forget to subscribe and follow us on social media at twitter.com slash Marley Show. It's the Marley Show. There's nothing else like it.